we should take nothing for granted. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together. Theodore Roosevelt, to announce that there must be no criticism of the president. By the way, what we call the president isn't even the president. I don't recognize this government. They weren't elected. They stole it. They stole it. To equate the U.S. with Bush, to equate the U.S. or Bush with me as a citizen is an outrage. Because these people are supposed to be working for us, not the other way around. And we've forgotten that. So, Theodore Roosevelt said, to announce there must be no criticism of the president or that we are to stand by the president, right or wrong, is not only unpatriotic and servile, but morally treasonable to the American public. To sin by silence when they should protest makes cowards of men. So we should have a million people out here today on the fifth anniversary of 9-11. We need to know the truth of 9-11 because that is the historic event of this century which has caused the tyranny, has created the pretext for lies and tyranny and treason on the part of the occupant of this Casablanca. So why am I here today? Why did I fly all the way in from Ecuador to do this? Because I grieve for my country. I've come to Washington today to join you in striking old roots and planting new seeds. We need not only to take back Washington and restore the Republic and our Constitution and the law as the law of the land, we are not only creating a movement of movements, we are not only encouraging whistleblowers. Some of you out here in the park might be working for the government right now. And you might have some qualms of conscience. This is the time to follow your conscience and tell the truth and seek the truth with love and compassion for all humanity. And if you lose your jobs, so what? I lost my job because I dared to challenge the existing order. We are not only pressing for impeachment of this gentleman that happens to illegally occupy this White House. And we're not only seeking his removal from office, we vow never to vote for anyone who supports war and most of the Bush agenda. We must remember that this regime was not even elected. They don't deserve to be there. Every time the media equates Bush to the U.S. every time the media equates us citizens with what they call the U.S. as if it controlling Cabal's foreign policy decisions represent the will of the people. Our standing in the world falls another notch. And I know that because we live abroad and the American people are now looked at with great disgrace and disgust because they see this as an unprecedented empire, a, another Rome. And I have a 55-year history with this city of being an activist, of working in many different capacities, from being an astronaut to being a protester to working for the government. Yes, I worked with Morris Udall when he ran for president. I worked with Jesse Jackson. I worked with many of these people, George McGovern, people, men of peace, people that were willing to challenge the existing order. Yeah, we need that. <clears throat> I do not acknowledge this myth and do not recognize this cabal in charge as the legitimate government of the United States. The growing realization of this truth will give us the space to organize a new, peaceful, sustainable agenda. I've personally spent 55 uh, years as an adult in Washington, D.C. Wow. On one of my more recent visits, I fell into wet concrete in front of the Senate office building, which taught me many valuable lessons about this city, beyond, beyond the obvious one, watch where you're going. 
this embarrassing experience showed me which steps we might take to restore the Republic. One, we have to be willing to confront our fears of entrapment. And right now, the gentleman, I don't even call him a gentleman, uh, the tyrant that's in the White House and his henchmen, uh, they, uh, they are fear-mongering. And the fear they're creating is to try to win elections and to take over the country as another fascist totalitarian state. We have to be willing to extricate ourselves from the rigidity, from this, this Orwellian nightmare of newspeak whenever you turn on the TV set and watch CNN or one of the networks or Fox News. And we have to be willing to leave a lasting imprint. So I'm hoping this trip will plant new seeds, new agendas, things that go beyond even the traditional progressive agenda of the, of the Democrats. Because that's not enough. It's not enough to save the planet. It's not enough to create peace. We have to leave a, a lasting imprint. And there are many recent successful models for creating nonviolent positive change in our policies. Citizen diplomacy. We here are citizen diplomats that are coming to the White House to protest and to reach out to the people of America to awaken to the possibilities, to build bridges with all of humanity. The efforts of fearless peace warriors such as Mahatma Gandhi and Martin Luther King fended off the, uh, uh, Gandhi fended off, uh, fended off the British Empire and King restored civil rights for the poor and the abolition of apartheid in South Africa is another uh, example of this through the process of truth and reconciliation. We need the truth of 9-11. That's why we're here today. We want the truth. Just to quote, to quote the mayor of Salt Lake City, Rocky Anderson, we want the truth. Yeah. Let's say it. We want the truth. We want the truth. We want the truth. We want the truth. We also need to draft a manifesto for peace, sustainability, and justice as a template, as a declaration of interdependence to complement our Constitution, which is now hanging by a flimsy thread. We need to restore the Republic. We need to restore the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. We need a declaration of interdependence with the rest of the world that includes the relevant features of the current Constitutions and somewhat brought up to date, but not in the context of the tyrant that inhabits the White House. Terrorists in the White House. Yes, the terrorists in the White House. If you look at the terrorists, you have to look in the mirror. Exactly. In this process, we need to do more than clean house. We need to both restore the original house and build new houses. Our agenda must be visionary. <clears throat> it must include bold Apollo-type programs to develop clean energy exploring the full range of options, whether they're accepted or not by leading scientists, many of whom are in cahoots with the powers that be because that's where the money is. We must produce new energy, and by new energy I mean not the traditional renewables. We must go beyond solar, wind, biofuels, and hydrogen fuel cells. We need energy that is futuristic, energy that's clean, cheap, decentralized, such as the zero-point energy, hydrogen and uh, advanced hydrogen technologies that go way beyond what General Motors, uh, General Motors can give us. Um, no and beyond nuclear, no very, very well. No nuclear, no, nuclear. no, no nukes. No nukes. No nukes. And no more uh, wars for oil. Yeah. And our ge energy agenda we can do research and development on some of these energy sources, <clears throat> which will provide a quantum leap in energy. We could all have our little power packs generating, let's say, 10 kilowatts of power for everybody on Earth. That can be developed for a research and development budget of $200 million. How much is $200 million? Well, that's money that is spent one day to destroy Iraq. One day in Iraq, or two days of profits for ExxonMobil. 
We could fix your back for less than that. You betcha. <clears throat> we have to create those structures that foster peace and end war, torture, and illegal detention. We must prevent the weaponization of space and eliminate from Earth all weapons of mass destruction. It must provide for continuing support of those displaced and moving from a war economy to a domestic peace economy. No more war here. That's right. No this, more war. We have warmongers that are in charge. They weren't even elected. And most likely, they created 9-11. And we have to wake up to that possibility. Our new agenda has to find ways to control the greed of large corporations. We must restore and enforce the Constitution and the Bill of Rights so that we can have events like this all the time and people need to come out by the millions yes. because that's going to bring down this government. Nonviolent protest is what does it, folks. Nonviolent, that's right. They want the truth, they should come out and seek it. We must ensure honest elections and eliminate private campaign financing. Yeah, great. We must provide health care and environmental protection and disaster relief for all, yeah. including the bungling of Katrina oh, yeah. by the person in that oh, Casablanca. We must make new friends of enemies because it's, it's all in the minds of these warmongers to to create and expand the military-industrial complex to produce these wars, these crazy wars that kill innocent civilians. Iraq is not my enemy. <clears throat> Iraq is not my enemy. No, not. Iran is not my Iran enemy. not my enemy either. It must stop the illegal not. surveillance of uh, citizens like ourselves. I've been surveyed upon surveillance. Well, guess what, folks? Is anybody here from the CIA? Can I have a show of hands? <laughs> my, my encouragement for you is, I want to be your friend, but I'm going to ask you to quit your job so you can tell the truth and not spy on me or create uh, disturbances like illegal detention and torture. <clears throat> we must end huge military budgets. The military budget is crazy. It's bonkers. The United States spends more money on the military than all other countries combined. It's ridiculous. It's a self-fulfilling fascist prophecy. We must bring the National Guard home where they're needed. And we must require that the budget be balanced and not spend money like drunken sailors. <clears throat> and we must co uh, uh, curb corporate greed. And we must learn the truth of the horrible nightmare of five years ago on this date in 2001. But most of all, our new agenda should require that we apologize to those who have been victims of our aggression. We should work with all nations to form a global green republic to address questions that affect all of us, such as climate change, peace, and international justice. We should develop revolutionary clean energy sources yep. <coughs> unfettered by disbelief and vested powers. <coughs> we should develop revolutionary clean energy sources unfettered by disbelief and vested powers. Folks, a new world awaits us if we only awaken. And so let us plant new seeds today. Let us strike the roots of the tyranny that is represented by the occupants of the White House and by most of Congress. Let us as citizens take these grassroots and plant new seeds, new grass, and let us come out in force, <clears throat> not in small numbers, but big numbers by the millions, and let us bring down this government non-violently. It happened in the country we live in, Ecuador. The previous president, who was a tyrant, was brought down peacefully 
by peaceful demonstrations in front of their Casablanca. It can happen here too. So the, our biggest enemy right now is apathy and fear. The fear of the unknown, this fear that came with the 9-11 event. We can do much better than that. We have to tell our congressmen and our senators that we will not vote for them unless they vote for the cause of peace and unless they go for the truth and for justice and for environmental protection. We're going to need it more than ever because the world is not going to survive. Our species has already overrun the planet unbelievably, <clears throat> way beyond any normal limits. And many, many former presidents and great people have warned about these things, these things that are now unfolding. And 9-11 is a symbolic event. It's sort of the turning point <clears throat> for our nation. We have to remove the neoconservatives from any position of responsibility before it's too late. And we're going to need to bring in new people in our government, new people who will truly be willing to risk a whole new deal, if you will, a whole new set of priorities away from the military, away from the fear-mongering, away from the war-mongering, away from supporting the oil companies and going to war for dwindling resources where the oil and the coal that's burned right now is polluting the atmosphere. It's creating a warming of the atmosphere, which is creating irreversible global climate change. And the United States is leading the way. I am just so sorry and sick about what our country has done on our behalf. And it has not been on our behalf. It has been on behalf of the tyranny of the few, the tyranny of a few elitists who have been controlling things now for a long time. So let's awaken. Regardless of our numbers, even if it's a small number at first, let's awaken. Let's get the truth of 9-11, and let that be the first step of a whole new republic. Thank you. on our behalf, and it has not been on our behalf. It has been on behalf of the tyranny of the few, the tyranny of a few elitists who have been controlling things now for a long time. So let's awaken. Regardless of our numbers, even if it's a small number at first, let's awaken. Let's get the truth of 9-11, and let that be the first step of a whole new republic. Thank you.